What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today I'm going to tell you a few of the reasons why you might be having a hard time learning your major scales. Do you have a hard time learning or remembering your major scales? If so, this is going to be a video that you want to check out. Over the years, I have taught tons and tons of beginning and early intermediate saxophone players. Uh, on my Skype lessons now, uh, one of the very first things I do every time I have a new student is I say, do you know your scales? Oftentimes they say, yeah, sort of, some of them. And that usually means no, not really, hardly any of them. And the reason for that almost 100% of the time is because they are practicing them wrong. So they can't organize them and they can't remember them. Scales are all a big math problem. It's all about the half steps and whole steps and about the circle of fifths. So as soon as you figure that out, learning and remembering your scales becomes way, way easier because they are organized. Now I'm going to put the circle of fifths up just so you can see it, but this video is not about how to do the circle of fifths, but I'm going to tell you how to organize your scales when you're learning them and trying to remember them and using the circle of fifths is going to help a lot. There'll be videos in the future where I do the circle of fifths, but this is just the let's get started and learn some scales and remember some scales video. So if you were a guitar player or a piano player, you would really think about the major scales mostly by half steps and whole steps because you can look at them and you can see them as you're playing. That if you start on this note, you need to do a whole step, a whole step, a half step, and so on and so forth. As saxophone players, as wind instrument players, trumpet players, trombone players also, we can't see our notes. So we hear a difference between a whole note and a half note, but when we're playing, we're not looking at it. So when we're trying to learn our scales, we don't want to do it by whole steps and half steps. We want to do it by what is altered in the scale. What is altered in the scale? That's it. That's how easy it is. So if you think about the very first scale that we learn, it's our C scale. So a C scale starts on C, goes to C, and everything is natural. So all the notes in between are natural. There are no sharps or flats. So you have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C. Now, if you write these scales out, if you're trying to remember and learn your scales by reading them through music, like if you write out the letter names or you're reading the note names or you're reading the notes, it's going to take you forever to remember these scales. But if you do it this way, it's going to be really easy. Every scale starts on the tonic or the root, meaning the one. In the case of C, that would be C. And it goes up an octave, sometimes two, depending on how much range you have on your saxophone. Uh, and it stops on that next tonic. So C starts on C and it goes up to C. So then the next thing you have to think about is what's in it. We don't need to think about all the letters in the musical alphabet between C and C. We know it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. You don't need to really think about that. All you need to think about is what is changed, what is altered. So in the C scale, nothing is altered. So it's from C to C, all natural. Pretty easy, right? Now the next scale that you want to learn after the C scale is the G scale. And we want to learn the G scale because it has one sharp, one sharp. That sharp is F sharp. Whenever you have at least one sharp in a scale, it's always going to have an F sharp because these sharps add on to each other. Okay. So if we're playing our G scale, we're going to play between G and G. Everything is natural except the F sharp. So to yourself, you think G scale starts on a G. It has an F sharp. <laughs> You don't need to think G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, because everything is natural except for the F sharp. So just think G to G with an F sharp. From there, you want to learn the next sharp scale, which is D scale. The D scale has two sharps. There's two sharps. So if it has one sharp, it has to have an F sharp. And if it has two sharps, the second sharp is a C sharp. Okay, so we're adding sharps. So uh, when we play our D scale, we start on a D, we go up to a D, everything is natural except for F sharp and C sharp. So we think D to D with F sharp and C sharp. We don't think D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, because we don't need all that information. We know it starts on a D, it ends on a D, and it has an F sharp and a C sharp in it. Everything else is natural. Um. 
Now that one, obviously you could do two octaves, but right now we're just trying to like get our scales down and learn the order of sharps and figure out how to implement them into the scales. Now the next scale is the A scale and it has three sharps in it. When I ask my students, what are the sharps in the A scale? It has three sharps. They start thinking about the A scale and they're like, ah. all right, it's got a C sharp, an F sharp and a G sharp. And that's correct, but it's a completely incorrect way of thinking about it. Yes, the C sharp is the first one that you play in the scale. That's the one that comes up first, the C sharp. But when you have one sharp in a scale, it's always F sharp. If you have two sharps, it's F sharp, C sharp. If you have three sharps, it's F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. So you need to think of them in that order. Even though they come in a different order in your scale, you wanna think about the name of the scale, which is the A scale. It has three sharps and your first sharp is always F sharp. Your second sharp is always C sharp. Your third sharp is always G sharp. Now that doesn't mean your F sharp is always gonna be the first sharp that pops up in the scale. That means when there's one sharp in a scale, it's an F sharp. If there's two sharps in a scale, it's an F sharp and a C sharp. If there's three, it's an F sharp and a C sharp and a G sharp. So now you're just adding on. As you go to the next scale, the next scale is an E scale. The E scale has four sharps. So we know that it starts on E. We know it goes up to E because it's an E scale. It has four sharps. We know that it has to have F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp in it because there's four and that's your first three no matter what. So then all we have to do is figure out what the fourth sharp is. Now the fourth sharp in this scale is D sharp. Now the circle of fifths would tell you that, but I don't want to get super deep into the circle of fifths right now. I just want to help you organize these scales. So when we have this E scale, we're going to have four sharps, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Okay. So we play from E to E with F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and a D sharp in it. The next scale has five sharps. It doesn't matter what the name of that scale is. It has five sharps. We already know the first four, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp, because if you have five sharps, the first four would be those sharps. Make sense? You understand how we're organizing this? We're going to the next thing, we're just adding on to it. So we're not playing random like, oh, this one has these sharps, and this one has this whole different set of sharps, and this one has these sharps in this order, and this one has this sharp in this order, and we're starting on this note. No, we're not thinking like that. We are starting on the note name of the scale and then we are adding our sharps or our flats in order. And that's how you're gonna remember your scales. So when you write down what scales you're working on, you wanna do C, in parentheses, natural sign. Nothing's in it, it's all natural. G, in parentheses, F sharp. D, in parentheses, F sharp, C sharp. A, in parentheses, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. E, in parentheses, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, so on and so forth. That is how you can remember your scales and memorize your scales really easily. And it's just way easier to add that one sharp and remember the rest because they just keep going in order. Now, if you look at the circle of fifths, again, I don't want to go deep into the circle of fifths, but the circle of fifths has 12 keys. There are 12 numbers on a clock. At one o'clock, you have G, it has one sharp. At two o'clock, you have D, it has two sharps. At three o'clock, you have A, it has three sharps. So it's really easy to kind of like organize it that way and look at it and organize it that way too. Now, if you look in the middle, it has an arrow sign going, everything on camera is opposite. So it's going to the right. Uh, so it goes F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp. That is your order of sharps. You're gonna add one every time you go to the next sharp scale. The flats is the exact opposite. So if you have one flat, it's gonna be a B flat. If you have two flats, it's going to be a B flat and you add the E flat. If you have three flats, you have a B flat, an E flat, and you add the A flat. So learn your scales by adding one sharp on the sharp side and one flat on the flat side. You want to go in this order to learn it, adding one sharp at a time on the sharp side and adding one flat at a time on the flat side. And it'll be really easy to learn and it'll be super easy to memorize. And that's it. That is the easiest way to remember your major scales. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you now understand how to organize learning your major scales to be more successful with learning and memorizing them, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my uh, channel, and share it with your friends. Comments, of course, are always welcome. Thanks a lot.